Welcome back to another episode. We've got a great show. We're going to talk 24 seven cash flow. Today's discussion is all about escaping your nine to five. That's what everybody wants to do. Everybody always talks about escaping their nine to five. So we're going to talk about some practical tips to escape uh, your nine to five. We've got Brian based in New York and he is uh, at least was a certified financial planner at some point. I'm seeing he's a CFP on his LinkedIn profile. So yeah, uh, probably was working corporate world. Uh, probably good with numbers and just said, Hey, there's a better way to do this and got into the the real estate game. So welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So when was the transition from the corporate world? What's your background anyways? Can you kind of give us a little bit of insight about you, who you are, and then kind of dive into what, what kind of popped out about real estate and how you got into it? Yeah. I mean, at heart, I'm a, I'm a Philly basketball, you know, kid grew up in the Allen Iverson era. Um, grew to be about six, four, six, five by like 13, 14, became nationally recruited. Uh, first game, they flew us out to Akron, uh, Ohio to play LeBron James and, and uh, his team and a sold out crowd. So um, basketball kind of took me all over the place, landed me at Columbia University. And that was where I think my, my transformation happened. I just met some very interesting mentors, interesting people there who were former athletes and were making you know, more money with their, with their head than athletes were making with their body. And that kind of transformed, you know, the way that I thought. So I got out of uh, college, got into financial planning, um, did the mom and pop kind of insurance planning and sales, working 100% commission. And that made me like just really tough, cold calling. And just like, you know, I got super into that. I um, took a job up in New York at a high net worth boutique firm where we were managing 1.4 billion for about 300 families. So did that high net worth advisory, got the CFP, worked at a startup. And the entire time I was um, saving all my money and just putting it into real estate, using those pay yourself first principles, you know, save 10% of your income, put it into real estate. And um, I just got hooked on it. I got bit by that real estate buy and hold uh, bug and and just uh, left the startup and jumped full time into my own, you know, real estate development company. That's awesome. And so talk us through like your first couple deals, like how has your strategy changed from when you started to today? Like, what's the difference? Yeah, I think the uh, the difference was w- most of us start off, we do some type of house hack. So you'll maybe do like a FHA loan. You put down 3.5% on a triplex. You live in one unit, rent out the other two, live there for a year. Then you move out, rent the whole building out and build cash flow. So we all start with these strategies where we save money and we park it into deals. And then you quickly realize, well, if I keep doing this, I'm just always going to be broke. Like I'm going to run out of money. No matter how much money you have, if you keep parking it, you will run out. So I started to learn about the birth strategy and full gut renovation and how you could identify properties that have what I call a developer spread. Maybe you can buy it for 50000 and when you're done renovating it, it's worth two fifty. So there's $200,000 of wiggle room for you to get in, do a renovation, refinance all of your money out, and then have some cash flow, have the tenant paying off that mortgage that uh, 30 year. So I got into that and, and that's when things started to you know, accelerate to the point where I you know, ended up doing about 300 uh, full gut renovations on buy and hold rental properties uh, in several states, all out of state in about a five to seven year period. Wow, that's pretty impressive. So I'm, I live in Las Vegas and I've been buying, uh, I started buying out of state in Indiana. Then I'm like, I like Pennsylvania. I started buying in Pennsylvania. Yeah. For some reason, I'm like, hey, I used to live there when I was a kid <laughs> and and just started looking at houses and just started buying stuff. So it, it, I do find it a little challenging doing out of state, especially because I'm on like 3,000 miles away. I don't want to go look at a $50,000 or $80,000 house that I buy. Um, but I'm kind of interested in in strategies that that are working well for you like so like how are you maximizing cash flow on these properties yeah i, I think um you always do these iterations so i first started off doing like section eight affordable housing you know voucher uh, based system and when you're doing that you start to think about the system and how can you get more uh juice per squeeze right so um you'll take a three bed one bath uh, row home and you figure well section eight pays off the voucher system, which pays by the bed. So a four bed voucher pays more than a three. So I started doing these renovations and flipping the kitchen. I started seeing other developers do this. And I was like, well, why are they flipping the kitchen from the back of the house into the dining room? And then just having kind of this eat in kitchen living room, it was more of a modern look, but they were putting another bedroom in the back of the house and now turning a three bed into a four. 
increasing the cash flow of the property. So I started doing these kitchen flips. And then before you know it, you're thinking completely outside of the box. And that's where co-living kind of transformed uh, to the point where we were just taking a three bed, one bath and converting it into three beds, three baths, three master suites. The only way to the bathroom is through the bedroom. And you can rent out each master suite for, let's call it right, right now, about $795, 800 a month. So you can take a property that would rent for $1,200 a month, and now it's going to rent for $2,300 to $2,400 a month, which is creating an extra $1,000 a month in cash flow per deal. So 10 of those, and you know, the average American is completely out of the nine to five and you know, yeah. on their way to doing this full time. So when you're, t- when you're, um, so you're acquiring most times with either hard money or private money. Um, yeah. And then when you're refinancing out, you're probably using it. I'm a finance guy, so I do lending <laughs> for a living. So you're doing some yeah. kind of DSER type of loan on the takeout. Is that kind of the yeah. strategy? Yeah, we're, we're completely in the, in the non QM space. You know, it's uh, I mean, you know, once you get over three or four properties, the average person's debt to income ratio is just completely obliterated. So um, we're dealing with some of the national portfolio lenders that are out there that just focus on this space. I mean, I've found that they have an insatiable, you know, appetite. They're collateralizing 600 to 800 million uh, of debt every six months, packaging it and selling it to the big land, you know, land trust. Um, mm-hmm. So they just want more business. And what I found was if you take this strategy and you do it in C-class neighborhoods and in in pockets of the country like Baltimore, like Philly, where their book of business is not really built out because everybody's doing it in uh, Jersey, um, New York, D.C. and and some of these bigger areas, you now become that diversification bucket for that collateralization. So it's definitely interesting. So, so walk me through like a deal today. I mean, prices have gone up in almost every market over the last five years or six years. It's been a crazy run. Now it's kind of softening a little bit, um, but there's still that. And now I think there's a tremendous opportunity again because everybody's scared to buy when we know <laughs> yeah. there's a huge demand for rental. I just read an article yeah, um, that these hedge funds are coming back now. They kind of pause, oh, yeah. they're coming back. And, and like there was a prediction in certain markets that they would own 40% of the rental inventory in certain markets. They only own like, I think like four or 5% right now. So that's yeah. kind of freaky. I think the government, I don't, I think the government will step in and not allow that. I think that they won't allow these big monopolies, but for the little investors out there like us, right, where we want to create 24 seven cash flow, we got to jump in this now because there's never been a better time because it's everything in life is getting more competitive with technology and everything. So, so walk, walk me through like, um, you know, all markets are different, but like you, you're 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 able to find good, kind of inexpensive, good cash flow markets. What does that look like a purchase, like an average deal for you right now, like purchase price, reno, and then what, what would that kind of look like? Yeah, some of the best deals right now, because look, rates have have uh, gone up. They are trending downwards. But we're not at that peak that we were at in October of 22. Um, we'll pro- probably keep you know doing a, a step stair. Um, kind of path downwards uh, towards the end of this year and then into next. But the typical deal, the best ones right now, I love single to multifamily conversions. I love finding uh, bigger properties that are a couple of thousand square feet, um, two or three stories where you can go in and convert them into multifamily and even convert them into multifamily co-living uh, type of properties because the cash flow, the co-living is huge right now because you need more cash flow to offset the, the rising interest rates. You have to offset that somehow. So going with a higher um, cash flowing strategy like co-living, this allows you to still dominate in some of these uh, markets like Philly, like Baltimore, uh, where you can buy a property. I would say for if you're buying it for 100, 150,000, you're putting in a couple hundred thousand in renovation. And then that property is going to be worth five, 550. That's like the sweet spot. It'll cash flow a thousand dollars a month. You can do a full burst strategy, get all your money out of it. And now you have this half a million dollar multifamily uh, asset that's going to appreciate to from 550 to 750, probably in the next five to 10 years. Um, so you're going to build equity, net worth, get tax deductions, write offs. If you're like me and you're an SEP uh, from a tax standpoint, you're creating massive uh, bonus depreciation tax losses that you can pass over to your spouse. I mean, it's just a win win. And you're doing good for the community. You're creating affordable workforce housing. So I call it the intersection between doing good for self and doing good for the community. I love that. So 
on some of these deals when you're when you're kind of uh, converting them to multifamily are you actually converting them to multifamily like so that when they come out and appraise you can say hey this is now a, a legal triplex is, oh, it, yeah. is it okay so that's what yes. you're doing you yeah so we will target it's a, it's a great question i will target a deal so I call the developer kind of the, the king of the hill in real estate because you have to know a little bit about everything. And in some instances, you have to know everyone's role individually and then have that um, air traffic control view of it all to really capitalize. So I know as much as my architect. So I will select a deal knowing the underlying zoning allows me to do a buy right conversion, meaning I buy right means I don't have to go through a variance board. I don't have to sit there and ask anyone for permission to do this conversion. I can do it with just proper architectural plans right over the counter same day and convert this property into this use. So I will select a property with that type of x-ray vision, knowing exactly what final product I can get. The lenders are already know that I can do it by right. Um, so yes, I can get that ARV appraisal based on the new product in the existing duplexes that are already with it, uh, within the market or triplexes within the market. And so that that process is re relatively streamlined, meaning like it's it, you're, within a within a month or two, you're getting approved. Like where when you're, I mean, typically these sounds like these are big renovations; they're a couple hundred grand. So they're oh yeah, know, it's a six month project, give or take. And so the time you're ready to go, all the permits and whatever you need, then you you have this this buy right program, and and then you, your your finished product is a triplex, and it's going to appraise at X fully remodeled based on um so other yeah tripox triplexes in the area yeah yeah that's yeah. good that's really good i mean that so really you're just for you're basically doing huge value adds um and you're really for uh forcing cash flow because now you're you're getting uh, not only is it a triplex but then you might add in um some some cream in that coffee which is like the co-living aspect per each unit now you're like three xing your returns Correct. Because yeah. if I was getting an extra thousand dollars a month on a single, then on a triplex, I'm probably getting another three thousand dollars a month over what the average investor is seeing. So yeah. it's, it's definitely it gives you a competitive edge because you can access cash flow from deals that other people can't see. And I found that to be the key. If anyone wants to become if you want to become good at anything, first, you have to study it. And in studying real estate and kind of how to produce cash flow, this is what gives you that advantage over other investors. If you can see further than them in terms of monetization, you can outbid them and you can scale up faster than them. And that this is like the key to success long term. And a lot of times it, it's, you know, the hard part is finding the deal. These deals are sometimes sitting on the MLS, right? I mean, it's not. Yes. It's not, yeah. So it's just like, hey, we're just doing this because we have the we, we have the experience and the foresight to, to see these opportunities where the most investors are like, what can I buy for it? What can I, you know, what is it just as is, Exa right? And so exactly. You're, you're looking for the the hidden treasure uh, where most people are overlooking at. So you you, you really, because the problem everybody faces is like, oh, I can't find a deal, right? But they're deal exactly. everywhere. So they're everywhere. And yeah, people ask me, Brian, where do you go to find deals? I actually put a, up a YouTube video called uh, How to Find Cheap Deals, My Seven Deal Sources, where I give you my seven sources that I go to for good deals. And Here's one thing that we all have to keep in mind. People say, well, I got to get an off-market deal. That right? That's the way to go, right? How do I get those? And I said, well, 90, 80 to 90 percent of the deals that move every year move on the MLS. So if you're only focusing on off-market, you're missing 90 percent of the share. I get most of my pennies on the dollar deals, deals for 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar off the MLS. And they're easier to close because there's less title work headaches um, that can jam up deals. When you get into auctions and some of these things, the title work could jam up 30 to 40 percent of the deals. But most people don't know that because they haven't scaled uh, to that level to see it. And and most of the markets you're buying in are like urban where like they've got old housing stock. They're usually like these giant homes that are like totally geared for this. And then you have you probably have multiple footprints of different house styles like because, you know, there's different there's, the, yeah, there's different three story. And then you can figure out how you maximize the space. And then, and then over the years, what's the process been where you've kind of like, I think the hardest problem I've found with flipping a bunch of houses is, is really getting the good contractor and the team and setting the expectations. Yeah, what's your this is a great question. How, how, how are you, how are you managing <laughs> this, especially question. if some of them are two hours away or something like that and you're not going there all the time? 
Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm like the pajama man. They'll, they'll call me because I'm sitting at my kitchen table in, in my underwear and like I'm I'm like doing 10 deals at once, 10 full guts. I've done as many as 50 deals at once. And um the good tr- contractors find you. This is what I found. You can't find the best people, but they're watching. You can only do uh one, well, two things. One, have integrity and two, pay everybody on time. If you have integrity and you pay people on time and you're in the business for a couple of years and you continue to scale and integrity means do what you said you're going to do. I, I talk to my people like this. Hey, I'm going to line up a deal for you. By the time we're done this, you'll have two. By the time we're done two, you'll have four. By the time you're done four, you'll have 10. And I do it. And when that word starts to get out within the contractor community, the best guys find you. And then you just have to keep enough volume to keep the best people fed. So at this point in my uh, you know career in doing this, I've been doing this for over a decade. Um, I just have the best guys, guys that I you know trust to do these deals blind. But I also have systems that allow me to see everything, even if I'm not there. And and a, another wrinkle to this is I learned in scaling from four deals at once. When I was doing four deals at once, I could get in my car, drive from New York to Philly, go see all the uh, properties, shake the hands, kiss the babies. And, and like, you know, do everything. Then you scale up to 10 deals at once and you still can only see four because when you get to the site, the guys want to talk, they're showing you this, that you have to create the systems that allow somebody to go in with a smartphone to see the property and show you what's going on. So you can see all 10 every day and become air traffic control. I can see more from right here where I sit today than I could if I got in my car and went out to go see these properties. So it's um, once you learn that, you become unlocked in this game. Yeah, that's a good point. Like you could have so many boots on the ground that's just doing doing walkthrough on on FaceTime, right? And like you're you're kind of you're setting the tone, like, hey, this is what I expect, and then you pay everybody on time, treat them with integrity, and then over time, people are like, hey, this Brian guy's got all the deals. He pays on time. It's a bunch of work. We got to be, you know, it's a win win for us and a win win for him because we're going to deliver top notch you know, quality. Yeah. So that makes, that makes a lot of sense. I think my problem has been out of state is that I just never got that, like that tempo. I was dealing with the bottom of the barrel contract. Yeah. And that's rough. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, ah, and you're almost like, I got to stop out of state investing. But really for me, there's a tons of opportunity out of state versus like, yeah. where am I going to invest? Like I can, Las Vegas, there's some opportunity, but I, when I was in California, I lived in California most of my life. Like there was, it, it was just so expensive, right? Like you, in the Bay Area where I lived, it's, you know, you're buying like an entry level fixer, 600 grand. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, ah, when then I look over on the East Coast, it's like, well, I can find stuff for you know anywhere from 50 to 150,000. And it just made, it makes more sense when you look at the cash flow too. Like, yeah. Plus, if you're just flipping all the time, you're never creating, you're not, you're creating yeah, some you're cash hustling. flow, you're, but you're never, yeah, it's a job. I mean, I still, yeah. I would always do some flips, but it, you got to buy and hold to create long term wealth. Yeah. And I I think, um, you know, the issue you present, it's been uh, I created a solution for it for my people, which is, hey, I want to invest out of town, but I need I don't have the resources that somebody like Brian has, who's been doing this for a while, has the best contractors, the best lenders, the best systems, the best suppliers. And how do I get that? I created a boots on the ground program where I actually tap people out of town investors into my resources in Philly. So we find the houses. I have a deal analyst. We find the houses for you for pennies on the dollar. We uh, inspect them, send out detailed analysis reports, full gut renovate them with our A team, um, help you with the lenders, the 100% lenders that'll give you all the money to uh, buy and renovate them, help you to put in the 30 year notes, help you to put uh, the tenants in place, property management. And we do that on like a fee based uh, service without the GC markups. Like I cut everything down uh, to the cost that I pay to get this done. And we have investors from uh, one guy from Canada. He just picked up his fifth deal um, in about six months. We got people from Salt Lake City, Nashville, uh, Texas, New York. Um, people are just tapping in from all over and having a lot of success um, doing this. So and I found it to be one of the only resources for that because I'm I'm always wanting to practice what I preach and back it up. So my people challenge me. They're like, Brian, I want to become you like this. How does that happen? So I put together this uh, boots on the ground program so that people can get involved in out of town investing without all the risk. That's awesome. That's really, really smart. And I think like every investor would love to get involved with that because 
a lot of people are really busy and they don't have the time right right now. They, exactly. they want to have the time to be able to do it and fly to, the, you know, if I'm in Cal or Nevada and I want to go to Philly and, you know, go walk my properties. But, you know, I'm stuck in my day job um, yeah. and we got to build that cash flow. So that's a really, really good program. So, like, that's where 24-7 cash flow university comes in. They join the university. Is that how they get in, involved into, like, getting those deals? It is. I mean, some people will try to they'll kind of learn about the boots on the ground program and they're just like, I just want to jump into that. And even when I bring someone into that, I will give them the education component, the uh, course content from the 24 seven cash flow university, because as I'm building a house for you and doing all this, you're learning all of my master systems that I built into the course content, how to scale, how to do 100 deals a year, all the systems, all the technology, all the resources, how I built this thing. So it's it's the ultimate learning experience. Um, but it is like you said, people, um, a lot of people want mentorship, but some people are like, hey, I'm a, I'm a professional. I got a buck 50 I'm sitting on, but I'm busy. I'm, I'm 45 years old. I got three kids. I don't have time to really do this. I want to do it, but I'd rather a done for you model versus even learning how to do it and going and doing it myself. Um, so it's a it's a mixture of both. A lot of people will get into the mentorship program where I work with you kind of one on one and then upgrade into this. And some people are just like, Brian, get me in that boots on the ground ASAP. And they just try to jump right in. We can't do it for everyone. Right. Because it's such a uh, in intensive service that there's only a few spots available for it. So I'm highly selective there. But um, there's still a few more spots available in it, uh, you know, for it for people who are interested. But definitely some people jump into, you know, one or the other. That's awesome. That's that that makes sense. And and on some of those deals, depending on the deal, it could be something like where you're you're setting up co-living within a yeah. triplex. Yeah, we do the co-living. Some people come in like this couple from Nashville came in and it's like a husband and wife. They're freaking awesome. Like, I just love spending time with these people. They came in within um, they joined the mentorship program within a month. They, they were like boots on the ground. Let's go say so upgrade within a month of the boots on the ground program. They locked up a deal that we bought, just like I told you, it's a, it's a two story. We bought it for a uh, 140,000. So within a month, 140,000, right off the MLS, we're going to blow the roof off, build it up a level, turn it into a duplex. And the ARV goes to 575,000. We'll put in a couple, a couple hundred thousand. So they're going to flip it. That's like 130, $140,000 flip. Um, and then they locked up another one a month later, another multifamily, a triplex, 3,800 square feet, three stories in uh, West Philly in a very like just neighborhood where everybody's doing ground up, everything's going on. So in, in uh, two months, they got two, you know, hundred thousand dollar plus flip deals locked up. We're actually going to start construction. We started on one already. We'll, we'll break around on the next one in a few days. They close on Friday. So, um, like, so yeah. So that's okay. So let's dive into this just a little bit and unpack it for the audience. Here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. We'll be right back after this break. Hi, this is Bo Eckstein, host of the Investor Financing Podcast. I appreciate you checking out our channel. On this podcast, we talk about real estate, investing, financing, business lending, and acquiring and expanding your business. I'm sure you will find some videos here that will help you build your business empire. There's a lot to see. Take your time and make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks again. Are you helping them? Basically, you're quarterbacking like what what the best options to you know with the you know working with Everything. the architect. And so they're yeah. they're pretty much hands free. I mean, what are they're they hands free? Doing? Listen to this. They they locked up. I just I just uh, did like a little interview of them because people wanted to hear their story. They they text me. They're in Puerto Rico. And they're like, Brian, we're in Puerto Rico on our honeymoon. We just got the deal under contract. They're, they're just like, the, you know, the realtor lets them know, hey, we got it. They're out of town. They're out of, out of the country sometimes. They're doing their thing. We're handling everything. I'm handling day-to-day -day construction, operations, material sourcing, execution. We got the architects, the engineers, the, uh, the, the resources with the city. We got the zoning attorneys. We, got, we have everything because I've done this hundreds of times. So what is very difficult, I, I say, if you want to know the, the, if somebody's a real guru, and I don't consider myself a guru, I'm just Brian. But if you want to see if these talking head gurus are real, ask them to build your house. That's it. 
Just ask them to build, hey, do it for me if it's so easy. And they'll say, no, we don't do that. I do that. You know, it's easy to me. I've done this hundreds of times. So tapping people in, yeah, we just, it's easier for me to manage it all and just keep you updated with full transparency. So we're sending, um, you know, these deal inspections, we're sending two video inspections of your rehab every day. So you're not only seeing it um, priced out by, you know, labor, ma uh, materials, the daily rate that the guys are getting paid, everything, but you're getting two inspection videos every day. So you can sit back two months from now and watch your entire full gut renovation process uh, on, on uh, Vimeo. Like it's, it's uh, the transparency goes back to integrity. It has to be second to none in order to keep everybody like tapped in at the highest level. So it's, everything is about integrity. If you do right for people um, and, and do well and treat everybody well and fair, there's more than enough money for everybody to be satisfied and, uh, and to win. And then the community wins because we're rebuilding communities uh, together in that sense. Yeah, that, that sounds like an amazing program, right? Because it's, it's, it's like a turnkey deal, except they're not paying turnkey prices and they're not, right? They're, they're, they're yeah. getting the investor deal. And then you're, you have some kind of project management fee. Obviously, you have to be paid for your time and you're doing like, yeah. you're actually doing all the heavy lifting. I'm doing all of it. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> so, like a it's like a property manager fee. Like yeah. they they charge the property manager charges you 10%. They deal with 100 percent of the drama, right? So it's it's very similar. It's uh it's cheaper than a partner. A lot of people think, well, I'm gonna get a partner to get in real estate. That'll give me leverage, right? This turnkey service is better than a partner because I don't take any of your profits. When you go flip a deal and you make 100 k you just made 100 k Or if we build you a house and you're gonna hold it now in cash flow you're getting the cash flow you're holding it it's for you and your family because to me real estate is a solo sport and a team sport ownership is solo i want you to own solo i want you and your family to win i want generational wealth for you guys the building process is the team sport you need many people to do a rehab so that's what i preach so that's what i practice i can never set up something where i'm now in your pocket in the deal in debt for perpetuity it's a solo sport. Ownership is a solo sport. I want you, if anybody, you and your wife, you know, your, your, uh, your partnership can own it. But outside of that, you know, it, it's definitely a solo sport to me. And that's what I preach. Yeah. So on, on, on something like that, like if we could just build in basically in the fees, probably we could build in your fee. So it's in the exactly. rehab budget, right? Exactly. And so I'm leveraging, I can get, you know, I, you can go to one of these national fix and fill up lenders. That will lend you up to 90% of purchase, 100% of repair costs. You'll need the 10% plus closing costs, plus a little bit of startup capital. You leverage it. Uh, okay, now I, I finish this triplex. Where, you know, uh, Coach Brian says, hey, this is let's do co-living for this. Do you have management in place that actually can deal with co-living? Because yeah, that seems so like a hassle. <laughs> it is a hassle, but of course, of course I do, right? Of course, okay. I've, I've uh, talked to some of the local property management companies, educated them on the process, helped them with the lease agreements necessary to do this because it is so new. And um, we have that turnkey as well. So we tap you in. I keep them um, third party, you know, because just for integrity purposes, for me, everything is about integrity. I want my people to know I work for them, not for, you know, I, I don't have like a handshake deal with the property management company. I don't take kickbacks uh, because I, I just like that integrity aspect if they don't like the property manager well they're fired you know like i want that type of energy uh with my people so that they know that my integrity lies with them and um you know with the family in that sense versus with all these outside kickbacks and parties and you know behind backdoor handshake deals that, that's just not my style yeah I, I and i think it's strength in numbers because so some of my properties right now i've been getting hammered on maintenance stuff because they're all older housing and stock now and it's like I call them and it's like, there's no transparency. Like, I'm like, yeah. well, did you replace the whole stove? Why are you charging me $547? And it's like, I'm I, like, finally, I just was so mad because every week now there's a maintenance issue. And I think like what you're doing with your community, it's like, hey, don't mess with our community. Like, cause we got lots we got of doors. Volume. Right, right, we got right. Volume. Yeah, so that makes yeah. sense. Like, cause that's part of the issues I'm having in some of the locations that I'm in. Cause it's just me. Right. Yeah. You know, and I might have a handful of doors in that, but nothing like significant. So and then I'm not there and they go oh, Cal or Nevada or California investor. Let's 
you know let's let's bring yeah. them up on the maintenance exactly Let, let's uh let's round up some fees it, you're you're 100 percent right you have to manage the manager and it can be difficult when you don't have volume but volume in this game especially in a non-qm space and you know that you know the industry the non-qm space is still small you know sector of the business it is not the majority so when you can move 50 deals you know a year 100 deals a year even if it's as a collective doors open up people have to listen you know i can go sit at a, a table with with an architect and say look you're dropping the fees on all our people i'm taking all of our people away <laughs> it's not just some of them i'll take all of them away and we like you but right. you're going to treat my people well or we can go to the lender and say hey you're going to you're going to drop that origination fee you know 50 bips or somebody else will and they kind of have to listen so we do get collective um pricing um I'm planning on opening up a warehouse at the end of the year just for our people so that we can bulk order a lot of stuff and get those 30, 40 percent discounts on the on the uh, ordering of materials, which will all go back into my people's pocket. So it's, it's all that philosophy of, you know, I don't do this just for self. People ask me, Brian, if if you know this and you're so good at this, why do you why don't you hoard the knowledge? Well, and or are you lying about it or are you withholding knowledge? And I just say, well, you know, the easiest way to withhold knowledge is how don't have a coaching program. Don't be on podcast. Don't be talking about it. Like, it's, it's not difficult. I'm here to help people. Um, so it's all about just feeding people, making sure the contractors are eating, making sure uh, the people that are in the programs are doing well and having success. And it, it all just feeds everything and feeds my mission, which is to rebuild, you know, these communities and rehab these neighborhoods and just have that social impact. So your your top kind of focus is Philly number one. You're doing the most in Philly, and then what other like top two other markets are you in right now? I love Baltimore. I'm I'm a very um, the philosophy like my my kind of family uh, mantra uh, that my father got from his mentor. The main things to keep the main thing the main thing, and it's just about staying locked in. It's more important now than even when I first heard that mantra because of social media and all the distractions. There's always some shiny uh, bell. There's always some other thing out there, some new investment strategy somewhere. I stay locked in until the market dries up. So I'm locked in on Philly. If Philly dries up, it's then Baltimore. But I've been in Baltimore since 2015. I'm actively rehabbing about four properties in Baltimore right now. And then Baltimore will be full steam. I'm planning on launching Boots on the Ground program into Baltimore sometime next year uh, because there's just a ton of cash flow there. It's a row home city. It, everything's 100 years old and it needs more development and there's a ton of opportunity and um there are parts of cleveland that are good but i think philly and baltimore th these are your sister cities new york city is the city of the world philly's the next closest city because new yorkers hate boston like they just hate like the the, the new england area um you have washington dc the capital baltimore is the sister city these sister cities do very well from inflows of people who are getting priced out of the more expensive market. So there's a philosophy there that uh, makes sense. Two row home cities, two sister cities, low property taxes, high rents, um, good uh, inflow of migration every year from more expensive cities. And, um, you know, it, it, historic cities at that as well, both of them. So uh, those are my, my, my primary targets. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. I, you never know when you get on a podcast, I didn't have a relationship with you, obviously. And it's like, you never know. Like, sometimes I get bad vibes with people. Then, like, I can see straight through you, which is what yeah. I like about it. It's like, you're, like, super transparent. And uh, I got a ton of value. I know I, people that are going to be watching this in the future are going to get a ton of value out of this. So where can we, where, where can we plug in? Where do we want to send people if they want to maybe join your mastermind group or learn more about Boots on the Ground? Yeah. Now, there's a few places you can find me. You can Google me, you know, Brian Grimes uh, explains or Brian Grimes real estate. You'll find videos on my YouTube channel. Brian loves cash flow. So Brian loves cash flow on YouTube. Easy to remember because I love cash flow. Uh, and, so, and so do you. Um, you can find me on uh, Instagram, Brian Grimes underscore 247 CFU for the 24 seven cash flow university. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Brian Grimes Real Estate. All of these uh, different platforms will backlink to a free training I put together for you guys on, at www.workwithgrimes.com forward slash cash flow. Workwithgrimes.com forward slash cash flow. It's a free training that'll show you how to acquire properties for pennies on a dollar all across the country. You don't want to miss out on that free offer. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. 
Uh, I'm probably going to talk to you about boots on the ground. <laughs> After we get off. <laughs> yeah, here. we got to talk. Yeah, no, it's uh, you just kind of brought it brought it up with kind of the issues you've been facing. So yeah, we should definitely talk uh, yeah. offline. Thank you yeah. so much. And uh, oh, last question I, I had for you because I was thinking this. I always I always try to figure out how come certain people are successful and others aren't. And like I find like for some reason like engineers do really well in multifamily syndication. Their numbers. I and I find that athletes right and you were a yeah. former athlete like there's something instilled in people well, like somebody was just talking about how kobe used to shoot free throws like eight before like every morning he would shoot eight thousand free throws what why you know why are some just more resourceful and like the resilience what do you think it is that like kind of drove you like was it was it instilled through your family or your family entrepreneurs or was it like wh how did you become you there is some there is some innate um, something that is innate, which is an, a positive obsession. So um, I, w I thought back, how did I get good at basketball? And, and my mother's like, you don't remember you would just literally set. I was set up two chairs. She used to work at like this office building. I go out in the hallway, set up two chairs and I'd be dribbling the basketball around these chairs for hours, I, like hours, just obsessed with basketball and then delayed gratification. So positive obsession, if you if you study something, if you just do it constantly and put in those 10,000 hours, um, you will you will get results at almost anything. You can also accelerate that with mentorship. But then just being um, just being locked in, just being locked in and uh, staying focused on what is, you know, the task ahead, just having that delayed gratification attitude, not looking for the results immediately. We live in this social media uh, generation where everything is like clicking, you know, at your fingertips and you go on social media and everybody's doing good, which is all you know, like an illusion, yeah. but it looks like people are getting instant results constantly. And if you keep chasing things, you're not keeping the main thing, the main thing, the main things to keep the main thing, the main thing. So if you just stay locked in on the main thing, which is real estate, cash flow, breaking free from the nine to five, and you block everything else out, you can, and you obsess over that, you cannot not get those results because you will hit that 10,000 hour mark very quickly um, Look, so yeah. don't get distracted and that that's what i think it is with athletes we know how to suck at something show up every day work hard for years to get good and um and then we obsess over that one thing that one sport that we just fall in love with love is also uh the connection point uh, between those two just loving it having a passion when you love something you learn it deeper um, so guys like us, we love real estate, right? <laughs> we literally have platforms that all we talk about is real estate in some shape or fashion because we love it. So um, that that is definitely there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Everybody, we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs> yeah. be, be, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. If you, I'll bring more people, well, maybe not as good as this one, but <laughs> like that's the point. We want to bring value to you guys. So I hope you enjoy this episode. There's a lot of takeaways here, guys. And getting locked in, I think, is the big takeaway. And stay focused. Stay tapped in. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for having me. Hey, guys. Bo Exian here. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe to this channel. We talk all things financing. I've been in the lending industry for over 20 years, and I'm happy to answer your questions and provide great content.